Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson is me, and I'll talk about Jimmy Stein in just a second because today we've got uh, a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Alabama's Pro Day. We're also going to discuss Jimmy's ranking of the Alabama RBs in the Nick Saban era. That's something that's been a lot of fun so far, so let's get right to it. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Jimmy, how are you today? I am uh, doing great. I'm doing great. You cannot hear me? Can you not hear me? I can't hear you you now. I could hear you, but see, I cannot hear you when your mouth doesn't move and words don't come out. Ah, yeah. I think it's a streaming issue we are having. Okay. So maybe you should just guess what I'm going to say. (laughs) (laughs) Normally, I I can. Yeah, that is true. Jimmy, I want to talk about a few quick hitters to begin. First of all, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Appreciate Bet Online and all they do. We'll talk about them in just a bit. Also, want to mention that Jason Holt has entered the transfer portal for Alabama basketball. Um, Anything you want to add to that? Uh, I wouldn't say it is unexpected, uh, but man, when you when you assume that J.D. Davison's going to the draft and Shackelford is going to enter the draft process and either stay there or transfer, uh, and now Holt is out, Luke, we may have a team next year where there are only four guys that are back who played the year before: uh, Gurley, Bediaco, Juwan Gary, and Darius Miles. Those four. The other nine guys will all be new uh, if you count uh, Namari Burnett as new. Uh, That's a shocking amount of new faces. And I know our fans are going to be excited about that perceived talent level. But with that number of new faces, I'm going to be the turd in the punch bowl that tells people all summer, don't get, don't, don't set your expectations at the elite eight. Not, not with this many new names. They have to learn to play with each other. Says the guy who picked Alabama to win the national championship this year. <laughs> You're so good Boy, at tempering expectations. I took a, uh, some heat for that, but let let uh, for that for the, those tweets. But by the way, I did tweet that Alabama would do that, but those tweets were a year old, and I backed off that hugely after the losses of Primo. Uh, as soon as we lost Primo, I said, uh, all right, no more national championship. That was just after losing Primo. And then when we lost Burnett, I was like, uh, ooh, I don't even know that we're getting to the super sweet 16. And, uh, and we didn't. Very, very true. Uh, Jimmy, Alabama's pro day. Uh, what stood out to you? I know that Jamison Williams said he's ahead of schedule, which is a big positive. And Slade Bolton apparently had a nice day. He went, yeah, he did really well in the drills. He made one outstanding catch. Kind of the play of the day was Slade Bolden laid out and caught a deep ball. That's the hardest thing to do. I mean, when you you go vertical, to horizontal to the ground on, on a deep ball that you catch over your shoulder, that was a great play. Uh, I, I think most of our guys look really good today. Uh, didn't have any outstanding 40 times. Even Slade didn't improve his 40 time, and LeBron Rays wasn't that great. but. But uh, that wasn't the most important stuff. They did a lot of on-the-field drills, and all of our guys looked really good. In particular for me was Christian Harris, who, gosh, uh, he was just doing linebacker coverage drills, Luke, and I thought he looked like a million bucks uh, the way he was moving out there. He, he's, he's a linebacker with DB skills, and, boy, that is exactly what they want in that league. I think Christian Harris has cemented himself as a guy likely to go in just the first handful of picks of the second round. Uh, Evan Neal had a good day. Brian Robinson with a good day, uh, I I thought. And, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty pretty solid for our dudes. When we come back, Jimmy, I want to tell you uh, that we're going to talk about your ranking of the Nick Saban era running backs, which has been a lot of fun to read. And we're going to do that right after I tell you about Athletic Greens 
look, our next partner, this Athletic Greens, this is a product that I've been using. Uh, I hadn't used it out in Vegas because when you come to Vegas, everything needs to stay in Vegas. Um, and, and I hope including this waistline. But I have started taking Athletic Greens. They're delicious. They're nutritious. They really do help you with gut health, more energy, optimized immune system. Uh, you know, I just didn't like taking pills and vitamins, so I wanted a supplement that tasted great, and this is that, Athletic Greens. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. That's right, adaptogens. You know you don't get enough adaptogens, and you need those to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and your aging. All the things that you need to be better at. There's no doubt. And I know I shouldn't end the sentence with that. Doesn't matter. I do love Athletic Greens. They taste delicious. They really do. It's lifestyle friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar. That's That's hardcore. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. And, you know, it's always COVID season, and this could help. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it, just one. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens are going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com backslash college, Athletic Greens dot com backslash college to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Then there's Stat Hero. I'm in Vegas right now, and look, I'm still playing Stat Hero. Love it. Stat Hero's NCAA single game pickups pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the upper hand. Focus on the players you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads, long odds, or funky props. Stat Hero is the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fix. The simple, sleek gameplay will have you playing in minutes. This is what daily fantasy was meant to be. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on. Promo code locked on. Terms and conditions may apply. Whew. Got that all out. That was um, big time. That was big time. Uh, all right, Jimmy, let's go back to uh, your ranking of the running backs. I'm going to differ. I, by the way, today in Vegas, I took a tour of Allegiant Stadium. It's incredible. I mean, unbelievable. And um, I got to go in the locker room. I uh, got my picture next to Josh Jacobs' locker. Uh, they love him some Josh Jacobs uh, with the Raiders. They love him some Kenny Stabler. And uh, you have Josh Jacobs number eight, uh, which yep. is – you know, I think I, I'm going to say it's low only because I know who number seven is, but I'll let you explain yourself really quick. Well, Josh Jacobs is eight. First of all, being the eighth best back of the Saban era is just unbelievably outstanding. And, and what people need to understand about this ranking, uh, and, and I put this in bold letters, this is not about the, the most talented guys or who's had the best NFL career. I'm not paying attention to any NFL stuff at all. Uh, not even where you got drafted uh, is, a, is a big factor here. The real big factors are yards rushing at Alabama. Now, is it just a straight line? Hey, who rushed for the most yards? No, not necessarily, but I, I weighted it heavily is the best way to put it. And the fact of the matter is Josh Jacobs never even started a football game at Alabama, never even started a game. And, and, and frankly, had fewer yards rushing than guys he's ahead of on this list. So I, I just couldn't rank Josh any higher than I did while fully admitting if I'm doing my favorites or the guys that I love or guys that I just think are uniquely gifted, he would be higher. But I, I used yards, yards receiving, yards rushing. Uh, and when you do that, uh, he, he's almost fortunate to rank eighth. Gosh, now that you – boy, I'm going to tell you, you convinced me. You convinced me uh, that you you were right on that. I was wrong. Um, then you and, – and look, here's what we need to do in, uh, in this. I do have a mistake on the list. Let's see if you can catch it. I do have a mis – I do, in retrospect, I think I got something wrong. I, I'm not going to change it because it's too late, but I do think I got something wrong on the list. Okay. Well, um, I think it. I think you've got several things wrong on the list, but that's my opinion. <laughs> um, okay. 
in the essence of time, we're going to go through these next three in just one big grouping. You got number seven, sure. Eddie Lacy, number six, Damian Harris, number five, TJ Yeldon. Um, I, I think that's about right. I could buy that. I could buy all those. But uh, anything you want to throw out there, and it is your mistake? Yeah, that, that's where I, that's where I believe the mistake I made it is. I I, I have TJ Yeldon at five and Damian Harris at six. I probably should flip those. Uh, Harris should probably be five. Yeldon should be six. Shout out to uh, on three Bama uh, on three subscriber Bama Sater, who uh, who kind of talked me into believing this was a mistake. Uh, he made a compelling uh, argument. He's right. Now, it, it, to justify it, Yeldon's numbers are better than Damian Harris's. And this is what I fell in love with about Yeldon's career that I re-reminded myself uh, going through these guys' careers. T.J. Yeldon is still the only true freshman running back at Alabama to rush for 1,000 yards in a season under Nick Saban. So as a freshman, T.J. Yeldon got off the bus rushing for 1,000 yards. That meant a lot to me. When I did the list, his total yards rushing is more than Damian Harris. Uh, that's why I had him at five and Damian at six. But I, I just think at Alabama, Damian Harris had a better career than TJ, and I probably got that wrong. Uh, you know, I can see that, but I think it's really close, number one. I would also say th those two are so similar to me. Neither one of them was breakaway speed guy. Um, mm -hmm. they, you know, D Damian Harris was known forever for being caught around the five yard line, but no matter right. if he took off running at the one and there was nobody around him, somebody's going to catch him at the five. That's just how it was going to be the one yard line, the other way. So, um, and, and then TJ Yeldon never really had a, a huge long, I remember he had one long run against Ole Miss after a spin move, but he never had a bunch of like breakaway runs. Yeah. They're kind of similar. And so really I say Ty goes to the Alabama native and to the guy who pissed off the Auburn fans the most by by sneaking away one weekend with uh, with uh, somebody and and then or or by actually no that was a uh, Brett Calloway the, by uh, telling me T.J. Yeldon told me to my face now this is what he had to tell anybody but I'm interviewing him at the Alabama Mississippi All Star game and I say T.J. a lot of rumors out there you may be flipping to Alabama I mean he emphatically said I am going to Auburn University. And so I remember when there were some people, and I think you might have been one of them, who kept telling me, look, TJ's still a big flip candidate. I kept saying, y'all, I'm telling you, the man looked me dead in my eyes. And that's when I realized, okay, I can't take any of this. And it's not even really lying. It's really not. No. It, the no. recruit can't say. Think, you can't say. Lying. First of all, if you're TJ Yeldon, you can't look and say, okay, I think your name is Luke, and I think you work for the AHSA, but I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to fall. Don't say anything. Even though you're recording this interview now, don't say anything. He has to lie in that situation. So I'm not going to hold that against him. And I'm going to go, Ty goes to the ho the hometown kid or home state kid in TJ Yeldon, and I can certainly buy that. Jimmy, need to uh, move on here and tell everybody about Built Bar. Uh, my son's eating a Built Bar right now. Got it from downstairs at the uh, – uh, convenience thing that's not really convenient because everything costs 10 times what it should in a casino but they're very good and i'm telling you they're awesome have you tried their puffs they're covered in chocolate they're protein infused marshmallows everything is covered in chocolate from built bar is so good yummy cinnamon churro coconut marshmallow banana cream pie all these things are awesome these are going to be your new favorites low calorie high protein all built bars covered in chocolate as i mentioned even the puffs are covered in chocolate most built bars contain only about 130 calories four grams of sugar and four net carbs that's unbelievable for the taste you get go to built.com use promo code lock 15 get 15 percent off that order use promo code lock 15 at built.com get 15 percent off that order you will not regret it jimmy and i have had them a gazillion times and we absolutely love them that's built.com promo code lock 15 all right, let's wrap up your uh, running back rankings as I still have some more money to lose, Jimmy, and I'm going to, I intend on doing that here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, this is where – now, you, you want to talk about making a mistake. <laughs> I don't think number four is a mistake. Number four, you have – I'm going to just read your your top four, and then you can, you can go with this how you want to. Trent Richardson at four, I think that is yep. so fair. And Trent Richardson's career will forever be tainted by his uh, failed NFL career. At Alabama, he was a stud. Number That's three, right. 
the fourth best back of the Saban era. I mean, that's a big freaking deal. Uh, what he did at Alabama, unbelievable numbers and finished third in the Heisman balloting. Uh, and then was the third pick in the draft, uh, further cementing how great he was. He also, uh, when I, I did the research, what uh, I was set over 700 yards receiving yeah. in addition to all the, uh, the and, and two national championships. Uh, he was a huge part of the 2011 national yeah. championship team as the primary back. But even in 09 as a freshman uh, that, that sort of uh, uh, gave Ingram a breather, he was a big part of us winning the games. He had a long touchdown run in the in the game against Texas. Yeah, he did. And he he had that man that beautiful run. I, boy, was that a swing pass against Arkansas that he had, where he really just like ran over a bunch of dudes down the yeah. right sideline? I think that may have been a yep. swing pass. Hard to remember. But okay, you have him at four. I'm I'm totally on board. I'm with you. You have Najee Harris three, Mark Ingram two. Now look, Mark Ingram should be. Uh, in a special place of every Alabama fan's heart. First Heisman Trophy winner. He is too full of Bama. He gave an impassioned speech. He he retweets and Instagrams Alabama stuff all the time. He's he's a Bama, and we love him to death. Thank you, Mark Ingram, for all you've done for the University of Alabama. Najee Harris is a better player. Oh, uh, I knew when I did the list and I put Mark at two and Najee three, I figured this would be the controversy, not – not five or six. Uh, and, and really the controversy comes down to this. Uh, Najee was a more productive back. Najee is a more classic back. Najee has some recency effect, uh, recency effect working in his favor. Uh, Najee had the fantastic rookie season with Pittsburgh. He was a first round pick drafted slightly ahead of where Mark was uh, when he came out. Um, Najee's a bigger dude. Najee rushed for more yards than Mark. He had a higher yard per carry than Mark and a lot more receiving yards than Mark. But I, I, I admit that Mark ranked second because he won the Heisman trophy in my mind. And, and I'm not going to diminish it. I, I know that there's an argument to say, well, if Najee did in 09, what he did in 2020, then Najee would have won the Heisman. Well, that's a lot of ifs and Najee didn't play in 09. Mark did. Najee finished fifth in the Heisman race. I'm just saying, we are truly spoiled if what we're doing at Alabama now is diminishing how huge it is to win a Heisman Trophy. So that's why Mark is two and, and Najee's three. Okay, very. all those are valid points. Um, and I don't think it's fair to say, well, if Najee had been there in 09, I mean, who, who knows? Things would have been different. Because Najee might not have been the same player because we wouldn't have been throwing it to the back quite as much. Um we would have right. been handing to the back a lot more. And Mark Ingram, I think, is more explosive. I don't think there's much doubt about that. I think Najee is probably just the better runner overall, but I think Mark Ingram's a little bit more explosive. Um, but I would also, I, my counterpoint would be Najee Harris won the SEC championship game MVP with five total touchdowns um, and on a team that had a Heisman Trophy winner and a guy that finished, what did, what did Mac finish, third in the Heisman? That year, yeah, I think third. I think I right. think third is right. Yeah. So, and and that's another thing is that you know Mark Ingram didn't have to compete with um, two other dudes on his own team getting hot stealing Heisman. Right. So, um, you know, he had a Heisman worthy season. I compared him yep. the other day in an interview to uh, Sean. Uh, in, in so many ways, I think Najee's career and Sean Alexander's career are quite similar in some ways. If you describe both of their careers. It's sort of similar, and 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 Sean was a NFL MVP. Uh, I won't be shocked if uh, I won't be shocked if one day Najee, like Derrick Henry, wins either Offensive Player of the Year or uh, or NFL MVP. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and finally, Derrick Henry, number one. I mean, absolute no brainer of all no brainers of all time in terms of brain. Yeah. Um, there's, <laughs> there's just nothing. There's there's. I mean, he's gotten even better. Uh, and it really, what's funny about Derrick Henry, he's number one, really based off one season. Now he won a national championship, won the MVP that year of the national championship game. Pretty sure he won the MVP of the SEC title game. Did he not? Or was that Coker? It would shock me if he did. It would shock me yeah. if he didn't. He, it, the defense was really good on that team, and Coker played great down the stretch. But 2015 was Derrick Henry's national championship team. Yeah, and um. And then, and then he had a couple, you know, like as a freshman, he had that 80-yard run against Arkansas. 
Um, he had a, a couple of big runs against Oklahoma in the bowl game. Um, and uh, not Oklahoma, Ohio State. Um, maybe it was Oklahoma too, though. Wasn't it Oklahoma too? He had a uh, – I, I think he did have a pretty good game against Oklahoma yeah. in, the, uh, in the Sugar Bowl. And uh, I think that's when we committed – to sort of go into Derek Moore, and then once we did, uh, we, we we committed to building it around him. Uh, the season he became draft eligible. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's an, and then he's become an even better pro. And the fact that he like lifts monster trucks over his head for recreational purposes is um, he's an Avenger. He really is an Avenger. If you were making an, a team with Avengers, you would put Derrick Henry on it. There's no question about it. And he dresses like Iron Man, but he's strong as the Hulk, and he's as good a dude as Captain America. And um, Yeah, I'd replace uh, him with Aquaman. I mean, I like Jason Momoa, and Jason Momoa looks like a superhero, but uh, I I still, the swimming fast thing still just doesn't, shouldn't qualify you to be a superhero. He swims fast. What what the, okay, well then what I'm going to do is, uh, here's what I'm going to do as a bad guy, not go in the water. Okay, yeah, that's that family guy had a great bit on that, but also you do know Aquaman isn't in the Avengers, right? Is he not? Is he's he in, Justice League? He's I'm, DC. I, I now really keep in mind, I, I love superhero movies, but I'm I'm not a comic book guy, so I don't know all that stuff. But I guess now that you mention it, I guess Aquaman would be in that Ugh. DC Justice League people, right? Oh my God, you just. You had you had a whole we had a, I'm afraid we have to start this whole podcast over, Jimmy. I'm I'm really <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave it right there because I got to get out of here and go lose some more money. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Bama. We'll be back hopefully tomorrow. Uh, but until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.